May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. If you were online, wherever today finds you, scraping a little snow off your car, or your pansy pot, uh, we're glad uh, that you have joined us for us here at church. Welcome as well. We are in the season of Easter. Believe it or not, it was just a week ago that we were proclaiming resurrection. The tomb is empty. And so what now? What do we do? And um, we are so very grateful to have a wonderful preacher with us today, and that is Pace Warfield May. Pace is our director of children and family uh, ministries here at Mount Olivet, and he has also finished his PhD coursework and is well on his way in his dissertation, a PhD in theology. And uh, he has a gift uh, really to proclaim as well as to make tangible uh, faith for younger kids. And what a gift, Pace, to have you here today talking about uh, Jesus, uh, some of the first appearances after the resurrection today. And so um, as we begin in the season of Easter, we give thanks for our baptism at the font where this gift um, of being connected with Jesus in death and in light. So I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin there. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, and by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are welcomed, restored, and supported. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in these waters we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams, Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of your spirit. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection and strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water where drought dries the earth. Bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos threatens, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you in the Spirit abides with us forever. Amen. We sing together.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the We'll be singing a new song of praise for the season of Easter. It is the This is the Feast that goes along with this setting. If you'd like to watch and follow along with the notes, it's in um, the beginning of the Red Hymnal on page 101. And right now, what we'll do is we'll hear it once, I'll sing it once, and then we'll join together.
pray together, God of peace. When we seek retribution, you offer us peace. When we are wounded, we see ourselves in your resurrected Son. And remember, you promise wholeness and healing. Stir up in us the desires to wage peace, offer hope, and provide salve for the wounds of your people and your creation. We pray this in the name of the wounded Christ, who lives and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Today's gospel lesson is found in John chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the religious authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples rejoiced, when they saw the Lord, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here in my <clears throat> and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to all. You may be seated. Good morning. So I used to work at a domestic violence shelter, and one of the roles that I had while I worked there was providing counselors for people in or survivors of domestic and inti intimate partner violence. And uh, one of the survivors I worked with after years of living in an abusive marriage was finally able to find freedom, move into her own house, and start a new life with her young child. In the course of our conversations over several months, one of the things I learned about her was that she was very excited about finally having her own place that could fit a family heirloom, a dining room table made by hand by her great-grandfather that had intricate, gorgeous, hand-carved pieces of mahogany inlaid into the surface of the table, um, which created these beautiful floral patterns. She would light up when she talked about finally having the space for this table in her new house, and one day being able to pass the table on down to her own daughter. Her mother was storing the table until she had a place for it to go. Now, as is tragically the case, often the case, cycles of abuse frequently run in families. Her mother was also a survivor of abuse, 
and now the survivor I was working with was worried about her mother's new boyfriend who just moved in with her mother, and he was showing signs of being an alcoholic and being abusive as well. She woke up early one morning to a phone call. There was a fire at her mother's house. Apparently, her mother's new boyfriend had passed out after a night of drinking, lit cigarette in hand. My client had raced over to her mother's house expecting the worst, but was relieved to find that no one had been seriously injured. There was, however, one major casualty of the fire. The gorgeous table that had been in her family for three generations that she finally had room to place in her own house, it was damaged in the fire. That beautiful inlaid wood was now covered in char and scorch marks, marks that were immediately apparent went so deep into the wood that no amount of sanding or refinishing could remove them. The ornate designs carved by hand that survived three generations over 100 years of use were damaged beyond repair. Nearly 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus was put to death by the state by manner of one of the most gruesome forms of capital punishment that humankind has ever devised, crucifixion. But Jesus did not stay dead. He first appeared to Mary Magdalene in the garden. Later that day, many of Jesus' disciples were hiding out in a closed room for fear that the powers that put Jesus to death would put them to death too. But Jesus appeared in the room with them and said, Peace be with you. He promised them that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit. But one of the disciples, a man named Thomas, was not with the others. So when he heard the news that Jesus Christ had first appeared to Mary and then to the others who were gathered, he was incredulous. Until I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger of the, um, in the mark of the nails in my hand in the wound on his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were once again gathered together, hiding out. But this time Thomas was with them. Christ appeared again and spoke directly to Thomas. Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas responds, my Lord and my God, for he has seen and now believed. There have been probably a billion sermons preached on this passage, I'm sure, (laughs) and so many focus on what it means to be Thomas and what it means to doubt or what it means to be one of the many generations of believers to come in the two millennia since that Jesus seems to be referencing when he says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. But for me, there's something else about this passage that we seem to gloss over way too readily. And that is Christ, who had performed great miracles of healing of others' bodies throughout his ministry, is resurrected in a body that still bears the marks of crucifixion. The flesh that the nails tore through that was pierced by a spear was still marked by the crucifixion. His wrist, his feet, his side still bore the wounds. Perhaps they were healing, perhaps they were puffy and bright pink, showing signs that the body was doing its work of healing. Perhaps the wounds were beginning to scab over, bruises probably surrounding the wounds and and, um, covering his face and back. Jesus, with the power to change water into wine and bring Lazarus back from death, chose to be resurrected in a disabled, wounded body. I do not think we truly understand what this means. I think we like to assume that if we were Mary encountering him in the garden surrounding the empty tomb, they would recognize him. Or if we were one of the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we would recognize immediately that it was Jesus in our presence. But if the resurrected Christ still bore the wounds of crucifixion mapped over his body, it is no wonder nobody recognized him. Where once there may have been a handsome face, there now is a face covered in dark purple bruises. Where once there was a man who could walk confidently across a storming sea, 
There now is a man whose back stings and burns too much from the healing wounds to stand upright. A body that experienced hours of trauma and one of the most painful execution practices, of course, would be fundamentally changed and different. Perhaps that is why the disciples did not recognize that the man limping next to them on the road to Emmaus, hunched over and bruised, is the same man who healed lepers and cast out demons. So perhaps it, this is why Thomas is the one who truly sees and understands the risen Christ, because he is saying, I don't believe that Jesus' body could have been resurrected unscathed from the traumas of crucifixion. I need to see the wounds in his hand and in his sight. I need to touch him to believe that this is not some fairy tale, that this is not some trick or lookalike. I need to see, I need to touch. I need my Savior to bear the wounds of crucifixion the way I bear the wounds and traumas of my own life, my own traumas and deaths and resurrections. There is a theory that some biblical scholars have that Thomas the Apostle may have been blind. He is the patron saint of the blind, after all, and that might explain why Thomas needed to feel the wounds of Christ to see, to know, and to believe. That may be why Thomas longed for a disabled Christ in resurrected body, so that he knew there was redemption available for his own body in his disability, when society then and now tells him that there is not, or tells lies that disability is born out of sin and brokenness, when in actuality it is the brokenness and sinfulness of the world, of our society, that does not provide adequate accessibility for disability. I, myself, am disabled. I experience chronic pain, back issues, arthritis in my knee, neurodivergence. I never fully recovered from the long haul COVID I had over two, excuse me, over two years ago. All of us who live long enough will be disabled if we are not disabled already. Nearly every day I experience the ways in which society was not made for people like me, inaccessible restrooms, chairs that cannot fit my body, messages from television and movies and well-meaning people that link disability to something I must have done wrong, to a lack of exercise or to not trying hard enough, or who see me and people like me as fundamentally broken. All of us who live long enough will become disabled if we are not already, and yet our society does not give space for us. The disabled body, my body, your body, is not a broken or mutilated body. It is a healed body, a healing body. So, per so perhaps I am a little bit like Thomas. I need to see Christ who looks like me, a disabled, wounded Christ in a healing body. It is the wounded Christ that Thomas longed to see, and it is the wounded Christ that invited him to see and to touch. It is the wounded Christ, the disabled Christ, bearing the marks of crucifixion that redeems the world and ultimately redeems us, who we can see and touch in our own woundedness, in our own disabledness, in our own pains and traumas. It is the wounded Christ who chooses to be resurrected in solidarity with the most vulnerable and marginalized of society. It is the wounded Christ who heals us and makes us whole. I began this sermon by talking about a table passed down three generations, forever damaged and scarred by a fire. At first, as you might expect, my client was heartbroken over the table, angry at her mother, angry at herself. But then, she told me, she realized that the table was even more of a family heirloom now, even more precious. You see, her and her mother's bodies had borne the traumas of abuse and violence, but they were still here. They survived. The table now too bore the marks of trauma, scars of the damage done, but it was still here. It survived. The table, she told me, better reflected her family's story now. Beauty, trauma, survival, hope. She saw herself on the table, and through that, she was able to find some measure of healing, some wholeness, some peace. Through the wounded Christ, may we see ourselves. May we too find healing, wholeness, and peace. 
Amen. We sing. By faith alone. And now in faith, we confess using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God be with you all. We uh, now can both uh, give and receive peace. For those who are online, we look forward to connecting with you in the Facebook comments. For those of us here at church, please extend that peace to each other. You may be seated. We now continue um, with the offering for all the amazing ways that you give financially uh, to the mission and vision of Mount Olivet and the proclamation of the gospel. We are so deeply grateful. There's a Venmo code in your bulletin. The basket up front is for everyone, especially for kids. Your coins and dollars go to feed hungry people. Christ has risen while earth slumbers. Christ has risen where hope died. As he said and as he promised, as we 
doubted and denied. Let the moon embrace a blessing. Let the state sustain the cheer. Let the world confirm the rumor. Christ is risen, God is here. Christ is risen for the people whom he died to love and save. Christ is risen for the women who bring flowers to his grave. Christ is risen for disciples Huddled in an upstairs room, he whose word inspired creation can't be silent by the tomb. Christ has risen and forever lives to challenge and to change all whose lives are messed and mangled all who find religion strange christ is risen christ is present making us what he has been evidence of transformation in which God is known and seen. We pray over our offering. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self, and we give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of the bread, reveal us to the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. and with the 
angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, uh, we are gathered together this morning by the Spirit, and we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this meal, uh, we come forward just as we are. Um, and God tells us, uh, God says yes to each one of us. God says, uh, I am for you, and God says, I am good. So however you are coming today, please come forward, open your hands, and receive this gift of love. Um, just a few things the ushers will guide you forward. If you are online, uh, the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Uh, the wafers here are gluten-free, the wine uh, is darker in color, and the juice is lighter in color. Um, you're also welcome to use the kneelers to pray when you're finished. Come now, uh, the meal has been prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And now we pray. In our woundedness, we pray to um, a God and a Savior who is wounded also, who chooses to embody resurrected, resurrection in a body that still shows the scars. So know today your prayers in the present and in the past come before God in your community as we are all shaped, as we accompany each other in this life with love. And may you know that the times of struggle and suffering and grief and in every way that each of us feels disabled is a call from God in the world and a God who knows and understands and finds us and accompanies us there. So I'll start us off. If you are online, um, we receive your prayers. As you type them in the comments, I will read them. So let's pray. Good and gracious God, uh, for your word of proclamation that comes and it lands on our hearts for us to hear that resurrection takes time. Jesus has to come, not just once, but many times for the blind spots in our own lives and how we need to feel and touch your woundedness to hear again that we are healed in the bodies that we have and the spirits that we have. And God, break open our hearts in compassion uh, to be with each other in, as we each make our way. So hear now the prayers of your community. God, in your mercy. What prayers do we have today? Terry? So Terry is speaking um, just an acknowledging prayer of the gift of community and of small groups 20 years ago. Um, just randomly, but yet with the spirit breathing, a group was formed of eight single women who have met over these last 20 years and have walked with each other in so many things in life and in death. So Terry, uh, for your voice to represent for what it means to be a community in Christ, we pray, God, in your mercy. Yeah, Tony. So for Creator Lutheran Church, Tony and Rick, that is where you have come, and now you are here in our fold at Mount Olivet. Uh, but for your spirit of love and your prayers uh, to have continued to breathe into that community as they wait, that call process is spirit-led, and it takes time. Um, but for this new leader that will come, for the community that has called this new leader and the new leader has been called to that place for what God continues to do and for their vision and mission to be strengthened um, in the now and the future ahead, we pray. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Mark. So Mark's prayer is for calmness and wisdom for our world leaders in war, in ongoing war, in violence, in climate change. God, we pray in leadership for wisdom and calm. God, in your mercy. Barb. Yeah. Yeah. So God, our prayer is um, as our seasons change uh, for this potential flooding and for current flooding, 
Uh, we pray in this Thanksgiving of baptism for this living water, uh, but also um, water can drown and damage in so many different ways for us to be mindful of all the pockets of this world in our creation that are in need of your love and your restoration and community. We pray, God, in your mercy. Yeah, Rick. God, we pray for surely um, the returning of cancer after treatment. Um, for love to find her in the moment that she is at. Uh, for us to hear again that our prayers matter, that you are at work beyond what we can see, but also in the daily, for surely to feel that love and that dear presence. As she makes her way, we pray for healing of her body and also for love to her spirit. God, in your mercy. Wally. Mm. Yeah. Wally is praying. Uh, we hosted a movie showing here at Mount Olivet of the movie Till. Uh, 225 people here to watch that um, and uh, for a family member Deborah Watts a community member to be able to speak for this ongoing work of racial racial justice that Wally is speaking of and for how the spirit has called and continues to call us here as a church as a community to be a partner for that justice in the world uh, for the team of leaders and for so many God in your mercy Jan. Yeah. Yeah, God, we pray um, in our newspapers uh, here in Minnesota uh, for the shooting and violence for community and agony once again. Um, for all the things that we've prayed for, um, God, wisdom and calm uh, for community, and God, for change, for the vision that you have in your world, and for us to embody that. And we pray this in our woundedness today, God, in your mercy. As I look to prayers online, um, some other prayers in our community. Um, Anne is here. Kurt Holt's funeral is this Thursday at 11 o'clock. Uh, Kurt, Anne's dad, um, a member here at Mount Olivet, that um, through all his health challenges, uh, he was here at church. And this is a place where we will proclaim resurrection in Kurt's death. There is also the gift of life. And um, it matters in community to come and to accompany families in that time of grief. And so, Anne, our love goes to you in this week ahead um, as we prepare um, to love you and your family and to honor Kurt's life. God, in your mercy. And then also, uh, Barb Olson passed away last week. Barb is the wife of Pastor Norm Olson, members here for so very long. And Barb was a member of the choir. Uh, that funeral is planned for Monday, May 15th, and more information. But love for Barb's family, uh, for her faith, um, that has just been so anchoring in this faith community. And again, to be able to be present here at Mount Olivet to proclaim resurrection in the midst of our grief. Uh, we pray for Barb and her family, for her uh, reuniting with Norm in heaven, and God, for all the ways um, that you will continue to comfort and heal in the days ahead. God, in your mercy. Um, online, I'm coming to you if you have any prayers today. Into your hands, O oh God, for all these things that we pray, we trust in your mercy and your love. Amen. I invite Kathy and Mark Schmidt up front. Um,
the leaders of our Brews, Eats, and Beats, which is a big summer party that's coming up in the months ahead, and they are here to fill us in on some exciting details. Good morning. Good morning. We are excited to share that we have uh, booked and um, figured out our lineup for both uh, bands and food. Um, our bands this year are going to be Turn, 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 which is a um, going to be our headliner, and then we also have Sarah Morris and Corey Medina and Brothers. We're excited about that. And um, for the food, it's going to be similar to last year. We're going to have the Lookout, Milton's, um, Redmond's Popcorn, Honey and Mackey's Ice Cream, and then we added a food vendor this year, Hannah Bistro. So excited to have another, um, I think, more uh, you know, diverse uh, menu, which is exciting. Uh, and then ticket, Mark? doing? Nothing. Why aren't you like participating? Sorry, no, I, I was paying attention. Believe me, I was paying attention, but um, I just got to tell you, our website that we put together, this is fantastic. Have you seen it? It's outstanding. It's got everything you need to know on here. I think everything that I heard her say, I heard you say. It. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm listening, but anyway, um, you know, you can Buy tickets today. I know. Tickets are on sale. You can go out here and buy tickets today. Mm -hmm. You know what else you can do? What? You can find out about how to volunteer, and you can participate. You, if you have something for this island auction that you want to gift, you can find out about it on here, too. Everything's I mean, this is almost on the better website. than your announcements. I mean, not quite, <laughs> but well, so. Anyway, so. Well, that's part of our message as well, is we just wanted to tell you all this information is out here. And then I wanted to check in with you, too, because remember a few weeks ago, right, when we were up here before, when we were trying to be funny before? <laughs> <laughs> what, was, uh, what was the thing that I asked of you, right? Ten people. Ten people. Well, it was actually five, but we'll take <laughs> But I wanted you all to tell your friends and neighbors about our event and the whole debate. Now, raise your hand. Who's done that? <laughs> uh, come on, be brave. All right, so a few of you, even just one. Well, that, there's still an opportunity to do that. So we've got, in the back here, we've got these little cards that are saved to date, kind of old school, right? On the They're, Welcome Center. Counter, right. Yep. And we've got, I'm going to give you some too. Oh, okay. Kathy and I are, are not going home with these today. Yeah. So if you don't, have it done your task, and it was a task, <laughs> I want you to take one of these and give it to your friends and neighbors and, and uh, invite them to the great event. August 5th. August See you 5th. there. One more thing. I promise you what? Sunny weather. No mosquitoes. And I'm going to add one more promise. It won't be snowing. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Just a couple more announcements. Hang on. Um, if you haven't pre-ordered flowers for, uh, to support our youth who are going to Montana, please pick up this card, which is also at the welcome uh, counter. And uh, those pre-orders are due by April 23rd for pickup on Friday, May 5th. And then our last announcement, if you want to explore vegetarian or vegan cooking, I'm looking around the room, uh, meet Ron Frainer and some other people in the fireside directly after this. Um, he is uh, trying to garner some interest in a, a vegetarian vegan cooking group. So meet, that, meet Ron and others there, and I think there's going to be some vegetarian brunch fair there as well. So with that, please stand for our sending hymn. <laughs> Sing His praises, hallelujah. 
May the loving power of God, which raised Jesus from the dead, strengthen you with the Spirit and bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. God.